So today we're doing some more metal spinning. Um, I'm still not that confident in my abilities, but uh, just keep messing around with it and having a good time. Uh, we're, we're doing uh, we're doing copper like this piece here. Uh, this was actually kind of a, I messed it up. Uh, you can watch the other video or two that I have on copper spinning. Uh, I just thought I would share a little bit because I kind of uh, changed my setup a little bit. So I still use this uh, four jaw chuck uh, on this uh, Nova MIDI lathe, uh, Comet 2, Nova Comet 2 MIDI lathe. Um, I'm working today with uh, some half inch uh, type L, it's kind of standard copper pipe, and then some type M here. Um, I think I have those uh, designations correct. This is a little thinner wall. There's some one inch type L, the heavy stuff. This is thinner stuff here, so it's a little easier for me to work with. Um, and uh, I mount up a piece of copper tubing in the chuck there, and then I free spin it uh, off of this tool rest using my, uh, my homemade round nose and planishing tool that I have there. Um, what I changed here is that I uh, got a hold of some arbors here. Actually, it's, it's loose right now. So that arbor is made for a um, quarter inch rod, which is what's sticking out of this right now. Um, it, it's uh, designed for a draw bar, which I just took a piece of 3 8 all thread and stuck it through and then I have a block of wood here and then a nut which tightens and draws the arbor in and tightens it down on this rod. Uh, I'm doing that because I want to have a piece of uh, copper tubing. Uh, so if I had a piece here. Now, here's a piece. And you can see that what I did was I spun the copper tubing down against the uh, the rod there so I can get that quarter inch inside diameter that's nice and smooth so I can easily take a piece of uh, quarter inch copper tubing and braise to that so I can make different things. So um, in addition to that because uh, I want better support and this rod is a little bit flexible and whenever this thing's running it could have a little bit of a could be a little off center a little vibration. I got a 5 8 inch uh, drill chuck here. Now normally with a lathe uh, whether wood lathe or a metal lathe, if you put a drill chuck in the uh, tailstock, it's going to be fixed, it's going to be locked, because if you're going to be doing any drilling, this is going to be fixed, you say your drill bit, and then your workpiece is going to be spinning around the drill bit. I actually want this thing to free spin just as a support. Um, people that are more familiar with this kinds of th th this kind of work or working with any kind of uh, long stuff like this um, I'm sure are aware of some other methods that you could go about doing this and uh, feel free to comment uh, so what I did was I got a uh, rotating arbor uh, this goes from let's see uh, Morse taper 2 MT2 to uh, I think this is a this is not a JT33 uh, yes, it is. It's the JT33. I think it's a Jacobs Taper 33. Um, originally, I bought this thing thinking I could use my, my half-inch drill chuck, and it turns out it has a, a different um, different arbor, re received a different arbor. So I actually just ended up, this was like 18 bucks or something online, uh, bought one that was 5 8 inch, so I'm a little bit bigger, and got the correct, the JT33, so I could adapt to this. So I can put the uh, quarter-inch rod in the chuck there and support it, so I have a driving end and then, uh, then the, the, uh, the center over there that's holding it up. Um, so what I intended to do was to be able to make fittings, make like tanks and stuff like that. So uh, in that case, uh, I tried to uh, push down. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I worked this end down, and then I worked this end down here. Uh, uh, I did that so that this end would be better supported, which would be towards the end, because um, uh, once I reduced this diameter, it could have a little more wobble, wobble and flex. So I, I decided to work on that end first. Uh, what happened with this one uh, was as I was reducing this, it was elongating the entire length of, of tubing. And uh, I was working with this same rod here, and it actually ended up kind of jamming into <laughs> my drill uh, drill chuck there. Um, I also got this tubing perhaps a little bit too thin on uh, on this end. The pipe was reduced to a pretty small diameter, well, a thin wall, and um, and then the end kind of got a little boogered up because it was up against the drill chuck, 
So uh, <clears throat> I removed the uh, rod out of the arbor and tried to trim it and uh, what happened was it kind of caught and because uh, there wasn't much support and this is kind of thin and it was all that leverage there it just uh, it bent and got all wobbly and stuff. So uh, uh, this was actually one of the first pieces that I attempted that's just a piece of half inch pipe just messing around and then uh, I think this was kind of a piece that I had left over so I didn't even bother with the uh, arbor or anything I just wanted to see how well I could close it down and I did it seemed like it pretty well bonded or I wouldn't call it a weld maybe you call it a mechanical weld or something but uh, push that copper together I don't know how thick it is at the point but appears to be sealed at least from gas at a reasonable pressure and then here's another one there kind of a early tank and then the one that I told you I messed up and here's the last one which I thought was kind of nifty so uh, that was relatively successful tank I could cut that thing off there on this end and trim it up and uh, use that as some kind of an accumulator or something like that but what happened you can kind of see that ripple in the middle uh, towards the end I was trying to kind of plainish uh, the, the body of this thing, the middle of it, kind of smooth everything out and it started to vibrate and uh, I thought, well, you know, whatever, it's no, no big loss but uh, I went ahead and finished polishing it and when I shut it off I realized I got this nice ripple going on from that vibration and uh, the workpiece skipping against the, the tool so that's pretty nifty, I like that so I'm going to be doing some more work with, with those tanks and stuff and maybe I'll be able to make my own uh, filter dryers and stuff for the refrigeration setup. Uh, in addition, although I haven't finished this yet, I just took a piece of uh, high-speed steel and I drilled a hole in the end of it, put a tap, uh, uh, tap this hole in the side, put a set screw in, and I just took the high-speed steel. I kind of just shaped it on the grinder roughly. I, I have no idea what I'm doing, but it's sharp enough that it'll easily cut copper so that I can trim the hairy ends of the copper when it becomes ragged. Um, oh, uh, in addition, I stopped using that paste wax and I'm just using a bar of Castile soap. Uh, works a lot better. It's a good lubricant. Um, doesn't stink like the paste wax. It uh, doesn't burn like the paste wax does either. Um, as long as you keep that, uh, keep that copper well lubricated, um, I don't get nearly as much of this. Uh, so you kind of impregnate some of the copper into the, the tool steel. So this needs to be uh, polished better and probably some kind of heat treatment done to it. But I don't know. Uh, I don't know a lot about that. So in time, in time. But uh, like I said, keep it lubricated, and uh, it, everything works a lot better. Um, and then anneal it when necessary with a torch. So anyway, that's uh, that's enough for now. So thanks for watching.